Hey guys, Christina here, and I wanted to talk to you about cloth diapering today. Now, first of all, I apologize if there's glare in my glasses. <laughs> I tried to find somewhere in my house where I could film without glare, and apparently that's just not possible, so hopefully there isn't too much here. Now, we are getting ready to potty train our youngest son, our fifth child. We have been cloth diapering for over 10 years, and so I wanted to go over and kind of share our experience with it, as well as answer some questions that we get quite a bit and to give you kind of an overview of the different types of diapers and some tips on just cloth diapering in general, but also how to save money when cloth diapering. So I wanted to start off, first of all, by kind of addressing the question or the comment that I get most often, which is, ew, I don't wanna touch my kid's poop. And if you're cloth diapering properly, you should not be touching your child's poop. So <laughs> there you go, right off the bat. If your child is exclusively breastfed, you're gonna put the diaper directly into a wet bag, which is actually dry, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. Or you can rinse it off and put it into the bag. If the child is older, you wanna just turn the diaper upside down and shake the poop into the toilet and flush it away, or again, use a diaper sprayer. So you should not be touching poop at any time, just to get that out there. So, a little bit about our cloth diaper experience. I was first exposed to cloth diapers when I was pregnant with our first child, who's almost 11 now. And my friend was using kind of the old school, it was like a fitted, uh, sorry, flat diaper with the pin and the rubber pants. And at first I thought, um, like why would you do that? <laughs> it's kind of weird. But as I talked to her, I realized that there were a lot of benefits to cloth diapering. Now we lived in an apartment at the time, and we just kind of figured, it, it, when I looked into it, it wasn't going to work for us. We had coin laundry and it was constantly being opened in the dryer. We lived in an actually like um, lower grade or below grade apartment. There was no outdoor space, so drying it, um, we couldn't put it outside. It was kind of an issue. So as well as, well as the initial cost, we just didn't have at that time. So I kind of put it on the back burner and went on with using disposable diapers. Then about when my son was six, seven months old, we moved from British Columbia out to Alberta. And I was reading a magazine in our local library and there was an article on cloth diapering. And I kind of thought, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> now at the time we had moved to a house that had a washer and dryer in it. And I thought this would be a good time to give it a go. And so we started buying just a couple cloth diapers, a couple covers, trying some different things out and seeing what would work best. So I think my son was probably like around nine or 10 months at this time. And we still used disposables primarily, but we started to use some cloth here and there to try them out and see what we liked. We then decided to buy a Bummies kit, which was a whole bunch of flat diapers with covers. And we used these for a few months and they were okay. And um, it worked for the most part. They're not my favorite kind of diaper, and I'll show you what is my favorite and what I like about it later on. But it worked for us at that time, and it worked in our budget. So then we found out we were expecting another child, and I started looking into what were the options available when we have two children in cloth diapers. And I found out that there were kind of what was new at the time, which was like a multi-size diaper. And so we bought a whole bunch of what were called baby kangas and we tried those out now my second son was very very small he was only six pounds two ounces and a lot of these diapers just didn't fit so we tried to find diapers that would fit for him so I bought some kiss love diapers and then we ended up buying Sandy's diapers and Sandy's has been by mother is my favorite diapers ever since and we have tried a number of other ones we've tried um, pocket diapers and all-in-ones and just um, a bunch of different styles and I will go over those later but those ended up being our favorite and those are the primarily the ones that we've used over the years now one thing I want to say about cloth diapering is that it does not have to be an all or nothing experience or event I guess we typically use disposable diapers at night. Once our children start to sleep through the night, we switch over to doing the disposables at night. That gives us time to wash and dry our diapers overnight. And we also use them like if we're going camping or on a longer trip where we're not gonna have laundry facilities 
or we don't have the space to take a bunch of diapers with us. Um, for instance, we went overseas to visit family and it just wasn't practical for us to bring all of our cloth diapers with us and so we used disposable diapers. And you know what? That's okay. You have to do what works for you and so it does not have to be this black and white all or nothing. You find the mix that works for you. So why would you want a cloth diaper? Well, it's better for the environment, it's better for your child's skin, they don't have those chemicals that disposable diapers have in them next to your child's skin, and it's also better for your pocketbook. Whether you have multiple children in diapers at the same time, or you plan to have multiple children, you know, ones coming up that can reuse the diapers, they're just that, they're reusable. You have an initial cost, and that's it. You have the laundering cost and that's quite small. Now if you are even planning to use them for a short time, you also have the resale cost because you can resell your used cloth diapers if they're in good shape. So your initial investment you actually get some back on as well, possibly. So definitely good for your pocketbook. So let's talk about the initial cost for a moment. Now like I said before, this is something that was actually prohibitive to us to purchasing cloth diapers in order to start. Now I know that you don't actually have to put a lot of money in in order to start cloth diapering. There actually are organizations through like the Real Diaper Society, I believe it's called, um, Babies and Cloth, um, ones like that where they actually loan you the cloth diapers to use, free of cost. So there are programs like that that you can use. Other ideas, Kijiji, any of those kind of like Facebook marketplace, Mirage sale places, people resell diapers that they've only used for one child, but are still in really good condition. Now you wanna make sure when you um, buy secondhand that you're asking questions like, what was it washed in? Because that's really important. What kind of detergent or what was their washing um, style like? How many children use them? How old are they? Um, you may have to do what's called a strip, which means to take any minerals out of them depending on how they've been washed, and you always want to launder them before putting them on your own child. But there's all of those secondhand, there's free ones as well. Um, sometimes people will give them away. Something else to consider is doing a search in your area for anywhere where you can enter to win free diapers, because lots of companies do giveaways, and you can actually get free diapers. Another way is just to ask, does anyone have diapers that they're not using? What in between kind of children or they were maybe thinking of posting them and you kind of ask before they do. There's so many different ways to save money on cloth diapers. A lot of cloth diaper companies have sales around Earth Day as well. So that's something to keep in mind too. And sometimes there's other sales throughout the year or there's like clearance sales if they're going to change a style. They'll discount theirs or... Um, maybe a store is closing down. So there are so many ways to start cloth diapering on a budget. Now I wanted to talk a bit about the different types of diapers and right now we're washing our diapers. <laughs> so I will show you the ones that we have a little bit um, later. But there is a flat style one, which I'll insert a picture of. This is the most basic kind. You're going to fold this and then put a cover over it on the baby. There's also, you can use pins with these. It's just kind of old school. Or you can um, use a, a Velcro, which is called hook and loop, or a um, snap cover on top of it. The next one is a fitted diaper, and these are my absolute favorite because we found that they just work best for our kids. I like having the cover and the extra protection and um, just on top of that in case there's any accidents. Now I should add too that another pro or benefit of cloth diapering is that we don't have as many accidents. You know the blowouts you get in disposable diapers? Well, we don't really get those in cloth diapers which is pretty sweet. So then there's also what are called pocket diapers, which are like an outer shell with a, a cloth or something that you fold and put inside. And then when you wash, you take it out. The benefit of these is that they dry quickly and they're quite simple to use. Then the next style is called an all-in-one, which is basically just like a disposable diaper. You take, put it on, you take it off. That's pretty much all there is to it. 
Um, again, they have their pros and their cons. We found that they don't fit the best, um, but that's just for our children. For other people, they work great. So there's lots of different options when it comes to cloth diapering these days. So then there are cloth diaper accessories, and these seem to be a huge market these days. There's a lot of marketing going on to cloth diapering parents, and you really don't need that much. So I recommend having at least one wet bag, or two if you wanna alternate, that are large enough to hold like all your diapers, and then a smaller one for when you're out. Also, we do use a diaper sprayer. We've had three different kinds over the years. I think Bamiya's was my, my favorite one probably. We currently have a spray pal and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can do cloth wipes as well, and you can get those. There's all kinds of like pouches and accessories nowadays. You really don't need them. It's pretty simple and basic to cloth diaper. Now as far as washing goes, there's a lot of different opinions on which detergent to use and how to do it. I kind of take the position of this. There's a lot of people around the world who use cloth diapers. They don't necessarily have hot water or washing machines or fancy soaps, and you know what? It works for them. So I'm pretty much of the opinion that you can make anything that works for you work, work for you. We do a cold rinse, a hot wash with soap or detergent, another rinse, and then we either put them in the dryer or if it's a sunny summer day, we'll put them outside to dry. I don't put my covers in the dryer. I leave those to hang overnight, as well as the, um, the wet bag. Now, I use rock and green soap. When I first started cloth diapering, this is a, a soap that the companies, the cloth diaper companies recommended. They no longer do that, but it works really, really well for us. And so we've continued to use it without any issues. Something to be aware of is if you have hard water, you may need to use a different formula. We use the hard rock, it's called, because we do have hard water here. We have very few stains on our diapers. Um, you are gonna get some. There's certain foods that will stain diapers, things like prunes or beets. If your kids are eating beets, they will get a bit of a stain. The sun is a way to naturally kind of bleach those stains out. But again, it's very, very few and far between if you have a really good washing routine. Um, we wash every other day, pretty much. And I think that's one of the reasons our diapers are in good shape and they're very clean, is because we're not leaving them for three or four days, which some people nowadays kind of do. Um, we're getting them washed and taken care of. We, as our children start to get towards the potty training, it's more like maybe every three days, but I try not to let it go um, any longer than maybe like two and a half days, I'll do it in the morning, because I don't want them sitting, I want them washed and cleaned and ready to put away. All right, so a few other questions we get are things like, but don't you spend a lot on the water and the soap to wash the diapers? It depends where you live. We used to live in Northern Alberta where water was more expensive. It's cheaper um, where we are now. So possibly it's a cost, but compared to disposable diapers, no, it doesn't cost more, not at all. Does your washing machine get gross? No, not at all. You know, I like to compare it to if you're potty training and your child has an accident, if they pee um, or they poop in their underwear or their clothes, how do you deal with that? Well, you shake the poo into the toilet, you rinse it out and you wash it in your washing machine. And it's exactly the same thing. My washing machine is maybe even cleaner than normal because I'm doing like hot, almost sanitizing washes every couple days. We've never had any problems with buildup um, with smell, with any kind of backup or sewer issues, none whatsoever. So then another question that's common is, what about leaks? What happens if the diaper you're using is leaking? So there's a few issues. One is it could be repelling. There's a repelling issue, which mean it's not, means it's not absorbing as it should be. Or maybe the fit is incorrect. Or if you have a heavier wetting child, you do need sometimes to add an extra booster or a liner, something like that. There are disposable liners, as well as you can use fleece liners or any other kind of cloth liner. Personally, I don't like those. The disposable liners um, gave our children rashes and we just found we didn't need the other ones, but for some people, they 
find that that does work best for them. If we had our children in cloth diapers overnight, like for the whole night, we would definitely need to add extra layers, but because we don't, we're not in that situation. So I can't speak too much about that, except for when we did try overnight diapering a few times, it really didn't work for our family, which is why we use the disposables at night now. Another question I've been asked is about um, children getting rashes or getting like yeast infections. We have never had an issue with yeast in our diapers, not even once. Um, we've had few and far between rashes, like super, super few, maybe two or three the whole time the child is cloth diapered, like when they're teething or something. We really haven't de dealt with rashes at all. There are diaper creams that are safe to use with cloth diapers, and there's some other ones that you don't want to use. So you always want to be cognizant of that if you are going to use some diaper cream. I really like Peas in a Pod by All Things Jill. Uh, her diaper cream is really good and it's very natural and gentle and we honestly we get a, like a little container and I'll insert a picture and that's all we use that lasts more than one child through the entire cloth diapering time. So what about when you want to potty train then? What do you do? There are a lot of options out there. There are cloth trainers and there's different versions of them. We tried a few with our oldest child and we found they didn't fit very well and they just didn't really work for us. But again, this was almost, well, nine, eight years ago. Yeah, almost nine years ago. So they've come a long way since then. We just prefer to use underwear and we will use pull-ups at nighttime um, because we're, if, if we're potty training, we're not using all the diapers. And so the wash doesn't need to be done as often, which like I said, I don't like to let that go too long. So we do make that switch over to underwear and pull-ups at night but there are cloth diaper options as well. So what if your child is sick? Do you keep using cloth or do you use disposables? Well, that's totally up to you. You know, as far as things like diarrhea goes, I found cloth is better. It's going to help absorb and hold everything in better than a disposable is going to. Isn't it crazy the things we talk about sometimes? <laughs> but honestly, I just found that works better. If your child has a virus, um, maybe a cont something that's contagious, you know, it's really up to you to decide what's gonna work best for you. You can clean your cloth diapers properly, and then there's no issue. So another question I've had before is about sharing cloth diapers, particularly the ones that are multi-size between two children. So most people would recommend that you keep kind of a set for each child, but if you're washing properly, there's really no reason that you would have to do that. You know, we've used the same diapers for multiple children at the same time, like just um, set the, the rise and the settings different, and it's been no problem for us. So just do what is gonna work for you. So I'll go ahead and give you a look at the cloth diapers that we do have now, and just explain a little bit about them and about their features. All right, so I have a few things to show you here. So these are called a fitted diaper because essentially there's no, um, they're not a flat where you have to fold or you have to pin or um, use a snappy. They just go on the child like this, but they are not waterproof. You need to have a cover with them. So they're not like a pocket or an all-in-one. So these are the diapers that I have on hand that we're using right now. So I'll just give you a quick look at them. So this is Sandy's by Mother Ease. And this is absolutely my favorite diaper. And for a few reasons. One, they have the snaps on the side here. There's three different um, adjustments for the leg. And there's two at the top. So you can really get a good custom fit on it. These are size diapers as well, meaning you do need different sizes for different ages. This one, I wanna say it's a large, but I'll double check. But, um, like the newborn ones are fantastic and then small and I think it goes right to large I don't think there's a medium and then they have a toddler size as well so it's very very adjustable to get that really good fit on the child and then it has the gathering around the legs and what I love is it also has a gathering at the top here and this is gonna help especially the newborn size when you have newborns stop that blowout from happening so I really like these diapers and they come in different materials and this is the um, terry cotton I believe and they have different colors as well. But see um, diapers do not need to be stained they can be clean <laughs> so there's a look inside that one. This is also by Mother Ease and these ones are not my favorite but we have them so we use them. 
So this one here has an insert you can snap off. And then you can actually fold this down and do it up this way for a smaller child. So this one is more adjustable. This is meant to be more for kind of younger all the way up to older to kind of potty training. Or you can, again, as it get bigger, snap this back in and fold it onto the child this way for a larger child. And again, there's a few different snaps here. So you can see. Now this one doesn't have that um, elastic here. And I found that's um, kind of an issue. That's my kids tend to have skinny legs. So not my favorite, but still it works pretty good. It's a good option um, for cloth diapering. Now these are Thirsty's uh, covers. These are the duo wraps. So they come in two different sizes and they're both very adjustable. So you can make it quite small, snap it down, and do it up kind of like that. Or you can open it all the way up for an older child and just do it up like this. There you go. Now, one thing I really like about the Thirsties is they have this gusset here, which again is going to help fight anything from, you know, if it doesn't happen by chance to make it out of here, this is going to be an extra barrier and keep it in. And we found the combination of these two works very, very well. So these covers do come in snaps as well. I prefer to use Velcro or it's called um, Hook and Loop closure just because I get a better fit. I like the snaps on these, but not on the covers. So we've had these, um, well, since this child, and I think this cover was from before for my daughter as well. And there is wear happening on it. We used to use Thirsties, um, just their single size, and they lasted really, really well. But these, I'm not sure if because it's getting more wear out of it or if it's slightly thinner material, it is getting some, uh, some holes and such in it. So yeah, this is the size two from Thirsty's bit. Super, super cute prints. Oh, this one's got blueberry on it. My son was just wearing this earlier, so I grabbed it off him to show you guys. So that will come off in the wash, no problem. But there's a kind of look at those. And then I want to show you, this is the wet bag we keep in our diaper bag, so you can kind of see how big it is. It holds, two to three of these diapers and there's two different zippered waterproof areas and I don't remember the name of this one I will try and add it in or put it below um, because I really do like this bag and it's lasted really well so that's that kind of bag and then this one here is totally destroyed but this is our main wet bag we have had it for a long time, so you can see it's totally coming undone here. This is a Kanga sack, um, but it has the snap closures at the top, and this is usually sewn in here. Seriously, we've had this like eight or nine years, so it is a workhorse getting washed kind of every other day for most of that time. We have had other brands as well, uh, ones that have the zipper on the bottom. We found it didn't last quite as long um, as this one, but it was still a good one. And there's lots of options, but you can see how big it is. It fits all of our diapers in there. Now, as you can see, even though it's called a wet bag, it's actually dry. And it's just because it has a waterproof liner inside and it's going to hold your items that are wet um, inside. There is a method where you can actually put your diapers in like a pail and soak them in water if you want to. I've never tried that. This has just worked really well for us. We've really tried a wide variety of diapers over the years and I'll include it short list here of some of them.
keep in mind as well is that you just have to figure out what's going to work and that might take some trial and error. So I, when I'm talking with parents about cloth diapering, I usually say don't go out and buy a whole bunch of the same kind. But try a few um, different ones first and find out what works for you and then work on getting more of those ones that work. And remember that each child is a little different. Sometimes one diaper will fit a child really well, but it won't fit another child the same way. For instance, my boys have really skinny legs. My daughter didn't. So luckily we had a diaper that worked for both, but you may not. You may have to work on finding the one that truly works best for your child. So another question actually I should talk about is how many diapers do you need? Well, it depends on the age of your child. If you have a newborn, you should be looking at having at least 18 to 20 diapers because obviously they're gonna need diaper changes more often. As they get around a year, you could probably use about 15 or so. Right now, my son is two, we're starting to potty train. He's only using maybe three or four diapers at the most a day. So washing every other day, 10 would be more than enough. So it kind of changes as your child gets older. So here's a look at how we're storing the cloth diapers right now. We just have a change pad um, on here. I just have them folded in here. The drawer's a little full because we have um, underwear and such in here now. But they're just folded like this, ready to grab. I've got wipes and diapers, disposable diapers there. And the cover's here. This is that bum cream. It's been well used or had for a long time, but that's the one that's the favorite. And this here is just another cover I have. I don't use it very often. This is a Bummies one. This is one that we got when we bought that original kit many years ago. And um, it's held up okay. The, they don't have the gussets on them, which I prefer the gussets, and the Velcro is smaller on these ones. But this is a super whisper wrap, size large. Just give you an idea of another cover there. Again, cute little prints. And this fabric's a little thicker than the other one. Just wanted to give you a quick look at what a diaper sprayer actually looks like. And so it sits right here on the side. Um, this one has just a lever right there to use. And it's attached to the water source down here. So this one um, is just attached. Other ones we've had before have a little on-off um, tap here as well, which I do like when you have younger kids around. So you can kind of switch it off and they can't play with it. Now my husband's left-handed and he did this one and so he mounted it on the left, but um, if you're right-handed, you probably wanna mount it on the right-hand side just to make it a little bit easier. But that's what a diaper sprayer is. So I hope that's answered some questions about cloth diapering and maybe dispelled some myths for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I will try and answer them for you. And if you cloth diaper yourself, I'd love to know, do you have a favorite brand or a favorite diaper? And what made you make the decision to cloth diaper? I hope that you're having a great day. Take care.